Aladdin is in despair, and asks the Aaron-looking giant what he really is. However, the monster can't answer it and instead grants him one wish. Alibaba is sweating up a storm while working. He dreams of entering the labyrinth, but the boomer NPCs laugh at him. Entering a carriage, he encounters Aladdin eating the watermelons. Suddenly, Mr. Boodle arrives and sees the commotion. Aladdin jumps on Mr. Boodle and unwittingly insults him for having man boobs. Alibaba gets scolded and will be working for free until everything gets paid. Thank you, Aladdin. In his room at night, Aladdin also eats all of Alibaba's food, with nothing left for him. Alibaba thinks of entering a dungeon. However, Aladdin doesn't know anything but to eat. So, Alibaba also explains to him what a dungeon is. Dungeons are sources of riches and power. Gold, silver, jewelry, and magical relics. However, the rarest find is the metal vessel of a jinn. Aladdin asks more annoying questions, however. Alibaba falls asleep from exhaustion. Before falling asleep himself, Aladdin says goodnight to Ugo. The following morning, Alibaba rudely awakens Aladdin, who keeps tagging along and asking questions about the dungeons. Alibaba points to the seventh labyrinth, the Amun, a tall tower that appeared ten years ago. Alibaba plans on clearing the dungeons faster than everyone so that he can be the wealthiest man in the world and hopefully on Twitter. Alibaba asserts that he's got no time to waste with Aladdin's shenanigans. He explains he needs enough money to change the country. And of course, he needs them to gain access to top-tier women with gigantic melons. Aladdin spins in delight. However, he accidentally bumps into Morgiana, knocking down the pink-haired emo girl. Aladdin apologizes, but she quickly dismisses him. Being a man of culture, Alibaba shoots his shot, but gets turned down. While Morgiana walks away, Aladdin notices she's got chains on her feet, indicating she's a bond slave. Embarrassed, Morgiana tries to hide her feet, but falls flat on her face instead. Aladdin does a pro-gamer move, using his flute to break the chain. The crowd gathers because of this, prompting Mr. Boodle to intimidate Alibaba and embarrass Morgiana further. This angers Aladdin, so he uses his flute and some giant blue freaking arms appear and beat everyone. The commotion attracts the guards' attention, prompting the three to run. Alibaba realizes that Aladdin owns a jinn, so he lures him with beautiful ladies to accompany him in his labyrinth quest. Inside the CCI, or Cheek Clapping Institution, Aladdin reveals he needs to find other vessels so that Ugo can be reunited with his friends. He asks Alibaba to take him to the dungeons. With everything set in motion, Alibaba tries to enjoy the night but meets Elizabeth. A definite 10 out of 10 maiden in the making. As they exit, Mr. Budel waits for them. After being threatened, Alibaba decides to work for Mr. Budel till he dies. The following day, Alibaba is tasked with delivering high-quality wine to a neighboring lord, courtesy of Lord Jamil. While riding the cart, Aladdin notices Morgiana and the other bond slaves being sent to work in the mines. While traveling, Mr. Budel berates the bond slaves, forcing Alibaba to agree with him. However, Aladdin scolds Alibaba for lying to himself. Suddenly, the cart gets attacked by... Um, uh, oh, hey there. I feel I've seen this monster from somewhere. Hmm. The monster wreaks havoc, causing a kid to fall towards the creature's mouth. However, Morgiana saves her and falls to the creature's mouth anyway. Alibaba fails to save them and feels guilty. While Alibaba is shocked at Morgiana and the kid being digested, Mr. Budel nags him about carrying the wine back into the cargo. Finally realizing his inner strength, Alibaba smacks the master with a left hook, hurling him towards the barrels. Alibaba decides to jump into the pit, so Aladdin helped him out. He calls Ugo, a headless bodybuilder who forcefully claps the monster's cheeks. Okay, alright. Alibaba grabs Morgiana but gets thrown inside the flower's mouth. Aladdin springs into action and uses his flying carpet to drop all the barrels of wine into the creature's mouth. Or uh, whatever that part is. Meanwhile, Lord Jamil watches from afar with a smile on his face. The bond slave kid is reunited with her mother while Morgiana watches from the side. She sees Aladdin and Alibaba floating in the air like a bunch of Saudi Arabian buddy cops. Aladdin reveals his wish, to have a companion. He reaches his hand toward Alibaba and the two officially become friends. Suddenly, Mr. Budel angrily screams at them. This prompts Aladdin to ask Ugo to clap everyone's cheeks. The two reach the entrance to Anum. Fainting from hunger, Aladdin accidentally pushes Alibaba through, and they fall into the dungeon. Alibaba wakes up in flammable water and quickly runs to save Aladdin. 
Meanwhile, Lord Jamil enters the dungeon after Aladdin and Alibaba. Inside the dungeon, the two barely escape getting rolled into sushi, all thanks to Ugo's incredible cardio. They land in a strange new area filled with eggs. Aladdin gets attacked by a giant green ant. As Alibaba saves him, numerous green ants appear, surrounding the two buddies. Alibaba uses his small, uh, I mean, average-sized knife to destroy the monsters. As you can see, it's not about the size of the uh, blade. It's about how you use it. Suddenly, all the monsters coalesce into the most terrifying monster the two have ever faced. Your mom. The giant monster shoots fire, and the two narrowly escape. Although weakened, Aladdin calls upon Ugo to fight against this beast. Aladdin uses his last resort to Hulk smash the giant antagonist. Now, although they won, Aladdin faints from exhaustion. Alibaba takes Aladdin to a nearby corner and tries to use the flute. He feels terrible because he's constantly being saved. Feeling guilty, Alibaba decides to tell Aladdin that the dungeons can't be cleared by a single person. Suddenly, Alibaba is awakened by the sound of Lord Jamil's footsteps. Morgiana appears out of nowhere, leading Lord Jamil to Aladdin's hiding. Lord Jamil approaches the sleeping Aladdin and bows his head, calling the boy Magi. He takes Aladdin despite Alibaba's protests and orders Goltas to get rid of him. However, Alibaba is swift and manages to pin Goltas with a knife to the throat. Lord Jamil is impressed and decides to prescribe some acupuncture to Goltas, calling him useless. He threatens Alibaba into working for him. Eventually, they reach a fiery hallway with some weird scripture. Alibaba reads this but gets stabbed for interrupting Lord Jamil's thoughts. The Lord asks Alibaba to prove his right with the translation by crossing the fiery hallway. Motivated by guilt, Alibaba runs through the gauntlet, dodging whirls of fire. He reaches the end, switches off the traps, and lets the Lord through. However, the flames suddenly engulf him just before Aladdin awakens. Lord Jamil lies to Aladdin, telling him that Alibaba had gone through the dungeon first. However, after looking at Morgiana, Aladdin senses something's amiss. Lord Jamil leaves to inspect the dungeon ahead, leaving Morgiana to watch over Aladdin. Aladdin tries to be chummy with the pink-haired emo gal, but she ignores him. Eventually, Aladdin makes her laugh, and she lets her guard down. Morgiana explains she's from Katargo, a beautiful nation. Aladdin asks her to take him there, but obviously she's kinda tied and afraid of the Lord. Aladdin finally understands the concept of being a bond slave. Morgiana explains that Alibaba was burned to a crisp, but to everyone's shock, he arrives from a small window. At the same time, Lord Jamil runs and asks for help as they're getting clapped by some random monster in the dungeon. Shocked that Alibaba is still alive, he asks how he didn't get toasted. Alibaba explains that he tricked the Lord with the wrong translation and eventually found the right path. Aladdin and Alibaba escape, leaving poor old emo girl, the Lord, and his other bond slave against the monster. Aladdin tells her they'll meet again once she finds the strength to break free from her invisible chains. The two reach the Door of Truth. It has a symbol with some strange scripture and spaces for two right hands. Luckily, Alibaba has Aladdin, and they successfully initiate the spell to open the door. The entire dungeon suddenly transforms into a city with roller coaster like structures. Although the place looks vastly different, Aladdin realizes they're still inside the dungeon. Lord Jamil panics at the strange circumstance and begins beating up Morgiana for not knowing the answer. Aladdin and Alibaba fly over the city, realizing that there isn't anyone there. Aladdin reveals it's an Acropolis, the city of the dead. He got the story from Ugo, of course. They reach another door. Inside, countless swords, armor, and silver are strewn across the room. Suddenly, a bleeding Goltas reaches them and almost flattens the two. Now, instead of, I, I don't know, preparing for a fight, Aladdin inspects Goltas and attends to his injuries. Suddenly, Morgiana whoops Aladdin, prompting Alibaba to release his average-sized sword. Lord Jamil corners Alibaba while Morgiana goes back to Aladdin for more cheek clapping. Confident in his sword fighting skills, Lord Jamil launches an attack. However, Alibaba dodges this with a graceful spin, followed by an insult. The frustrated Lord throws a barrage of attacks but can't seem to hit Alibaba. So he eventually gets whooped by him, who reveals he knows the legendary king's stance. He screams for Morgiana's help, who immediately launches an attack on Alibaba. He barely blocks the fearsome kick. Alibaba attempts to get into the good graces of Morgiana. But she just whoops him, hurling him against the bronze stairs. Lord Jamil does a beatdown of Alibaba, kicking him in the ground Thanos style. Finally, he asks Morgiana to kill Alibaba. She picks up his sword and approaches Alibaba. 
Just as she's about to stab him, Aladdin destroys the sword with his magic. Aladdin casually helps Alibaba up. He asks Lord Jamil nicely for his flute back, but the Lord's acting like a little brat. This prompts Aladdin to call on his magical powers, unleashing a flower's worst nightmare, a flurry of glowing butterflies. Lord Jamil orders the emo girl to kick Aladdin, but she gets pinned against the wall by a magical glowing force. Aladdin calmly approaches Lord Jamil and again asks for his flute back. This time, the Lord complies. Before Aladdin could leave, the Lord reveals his acting off a prophecy about a boy who'll make him king. Suddenly, a jinn appears and tries to decide who will be king. Ugo appears to meet him. The old jinn introduces himself as Amon and tells Aladdin and Alibaba that the maze has been finished. Amon calls Aladdin the Magi, the one who chooses who'll be the king to lead the country. Aladdin asks who he really is, but before Amon could answer, someone from outside tries to close the portal. Amon opens a portal to the outside world. Before entering, Alibaba and Aladdin ask Morgiana to come with them. She hesitates and wants to stay with Lord Jamil, but Goltaz stops her, telling her she's different from them. Then the big oaf breaks Morgiana's chains with his sword. This motivates Morgiana to go with Aladdin and Alibaba. As the maze collapses, the three leave with their riches, and Amon infuses with Alibaba's average-sized sword. With the labyrinth destroyed, Judar leaves. With the adventure over, Alibaba decides to go to Sindria, the country Sinbad founded. However, he must first go to a land called Balbad to sort out some Balbad stuff. Alibaba decides to enlist the help of Aladdin in the adventures ahead. As they return to the world, Morgiana lands outside of the city. Meanwhile, Alibaba remains in the middle of the pit where the labyrinth used to be. The crowd realizes that he's finished the maze and rejoice that a commoner has accomplished such a feat. Meanwhile, Aladdin lands in an unknown field. Horse riders arrive from the horizon. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.